Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and I want to give you a little bit of an update on what's going on with Julian Assange. He had a court date on October 21st, and I want to give you a little bit of information about what happened with that. So, this is an article by a true pundit, and he uses the title, The Deep State is Assassinating Julian Assange, and that actually is the same title as this Zero Hedge article, too. And so I'm going to leave all these links down below. I'm going to cover them kind of fast, but just give you an overview of what went on. Okay, Julian Assange was in court, and he just did not appear to be himself. WikiLeaks founder and journalist Julian Assange appeared in court to fight his extradition to the United States, sluggishly reciting his name and date of birth in a zombie-like state, displaying signs of either sleep deprivation, torture, or poisoning, but quickly recovered to state the rigged case against him to the judge when he was asked if he understood what he was facing. Assange responded, appearing to fight back tears in his case management hearing, I can't think properly... I don't understand how this is equitable. This superpower, meaning the United States, had 10 years to prepare for this case, and I can't access my writings. It's very difficult where I am to do anything, but these people have unlimited resources. The WikiLeaks founder added, They are saying journalists and whistleblowers are enemies of the people. They have unfair advantages dealing with documents. They know the interior of my life with my psychologist. They steal my children's DNA. This is not equitable. What is happening here? And so he asked for a 90-day extension to prepare his defense against the extradition to the United States, and they refused to give that to him. So the extradition hearing is going to be on February, in, in February sometime. I don't remember the date, but I'm sure it's in one of these articles. I just can't remember exactly where. Anyway, it just seems like from reading all of these that there's something going on, and it's more than just somebody who is being kept in prison that he's just not doing well health-wise. And I don't know exactly what they are doing, but in this article, the Zero Hedge one, he gives an idea about something... Let's see, where is it at? Um, something about a type of drug, the zombie drug BZ, and that's what it is to kill his brain cells. And that is a retired USAF Lieutenant Colonel Karen Kwiatkowski who wrote that they are treating him with this. So this, at the time, you know, this person thought it was a crazy claim, but it's not so crazy anymore once they saw what he looked like. And, you know, also we know that there are other types of poisons and things that they have available that they can use and the heart attack gun. You remember that? So lots of stuff in here about possibilities and they're not sure exactly what's going on, but here's this, this guy, this Murray here, Craig Murray, a friend of Assange and former politician and this is something he said, until yesterday, I had always been quietly skeptical of those who claimed that Julian's treatment amounted to torture, even of Niles Melzer, the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, and skeptical of those who suggested that he may be subject to debilitating drug treatments. But having attended the trials in Uzbekistan of several victims of extreme torture, and having worked with survivors from Sierra Leone and elsewhere, I can tell you that yesterday changed my mind entirely, and Julian exhibited exactly the symptoms of a torture victim brought blinking into the light, particularly in terms of disorientation, confusion, and the real struggle to assert free will through the fog of learned helplessness. You know, this is somebody who has witnessed those effects in other cases, and so I don't know. Is that really what's going on? It's hard to say. And yes, there are a lot of people across the world who would like to see him dead. So I do think that his life is maybe being shortened in some way. And here the WikiLeaks wondered about this 18 signal jammers, three clusters, six antennas per cluster in a confined space 24-7 for seven months. That was in the uh, Ecuadorian embassy when he was there. So 
there are a lot of things that could be going on. It's really difficult to tell at this point. And the Swedish charges, the rape charges that were against him were dropped, but now they're being reinstigated again. And it's been very politicized, the whole thing. This is his mother here. She says, the slow and cruel assassination is taking place before our very eyes in the embassy in London. It's a good article to read here. And it talks about various situations. He does have a chronic lung condition he's had for several years and a frozen shoulder that could possibly have implications of a heart condition. So he's not doing well physically. And he also had one situation where he had been incarcerated before and they put something in his food that had metal in it and it broke off part of his tooth and that has never been addressed. And if you've ever had tooth issues, you know, that can be very painful and make you feel horrible all over. So, you know, this gives a lot of information about what is going on. And I'm also going to include links to some articles that you might not see normally. And this is from the Canary and it's talking about coverage of Assange's court appearance shows what a sorry state the media is in. And so it says here, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange appeared in court on 21st of October in his efforts to fight extradition to the U.S. Numerous outlets reported on it. Bloomberg described the journalist as mumbling. Another said he seemed frail and confused. Many mentioned that Assange struggled to say his name during the appearance. Essentially, they painted a picture of the WikiLeaks founder as weak and clueless. His comments in court, however, were very lucid. Clearly, Assange is not in the best health, but he's far from the hopeless wreck the media tried to portray. Julian Assange himself kept saying this is not equitable. What they're trying to do to him, it's just not, it's really not fair. And so here's another article from The Guardian. Julian Assange extradition judge refuses request for delay. And, you know, there's more about that. But it just goes on. Now, they also say these documents are coming out. This was from September 26th, and it says the Spanish security company spied on Julian Assange in London for the United States. And I bet you'll never guess what three-letter agency they were working for. Yeah, the CIA. That was happening. And again, that was in September that came out. This is from May and this says Ecuador will give Julian Assange's embassy computers and files to the U.S., which I think I probably mentioned in one of the previous Julian Assange videos. But I just wanted to remind you of that, that yes, they did give that stuff over. How's it all going to play out? I don't know. Here's this one from the 10th of April. And he, I believe, was arrested on the 11th of April. So this was the day before WikiLeaks reports spying operation against Julian Assange at Ecuador Embassy in London. Yeah, they had spying going on inside the embassy there. He had been spied on for years, probably. We don't know exactly how much, but they say it intensified after 2017. Now, I don't think it's the Trump administration that has intensified that. I think it is someone other than the Trump administration. And I think that they're desperate to find out what he has and they need to keep him from talking because if he talks, you know, the whole thing about what happened and how they got the DNC emails is going to start coming out. And especially with POTUS talking about CrowdStrike, this is all going to tie in together. So I think things are kind of ramping up right now. And I, I think probably we're going to see more of Julian Assange in the news. Although I'm really kind of surprised that we haven't seen any of this in our news. And all of these articles are from overseas media. In fact, this one is from El País, which is a Spanish news outlet. And so are these other two articles like this. Yeah, and then you've got The Guardian and you've got The Canary and huh, then Zero Hedge. So I will leave all the links down below. You can read through the different articles if you want to know more and more of the specifics. Like I said, I'm not going to go into all of it, but I just wanted to give you an overview 
of what is happening with Julian Assange. He's not in very good health and they are still holding him right now. I guess he's being held in the Belmarsh prison, which is a place known for, you know, kind of doing some not so great things to their prisoners. And the reason he's still being held is because he was being held for something because of a British violation of some kind. And that actually ran out. Not right now, they're just holding him as they ramp up to the whole extradition thing to the United States. And they're afraid that if they let him go, he will flee. And so they don't want him to run off. And so they're holding him until things can get worked out with the United States. So I don't know how it's going to all work out, but he's just not doing very well and he doesn't get to be on computer or anything like that none of that and you know it's getting very serious for him so that's what I've got on this one I just wanted to give you an update and give you these articles in case you want to go ahead and inform yourself more about the situation I'll kind of keep an eye on what's going on with Julian Assange but I don't know how much we're going to hear over here about it until the actual extradition proceedings, which will be in February. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. <music>